from the BBC World Service in association with ABC and Akashvani. This is Stumped. Hello and welcome to Stumped, your intercontinental hit of news, features and debate from the quirky world of cricket. I'm Alison Mitchell in London. Jim Maxwell, looking forward to the show and I'm in Sydney. And I'm Sunil Gupta for Akashvani, the country where it's all taking place in Delhi. Well, I've been over to Italy and back since we last spoke to each other, but pleased to be back now and tracking the World Cup, of course. On this week's show, we're going to go inside the Afghanistan camp after the men's second win of this Cricket World Cup. But we're going to start by paying tribute to former India captain Bishan Singh Bedi, who died this week at the age of 77. He was widely considered one of the game's greatest left-arm spinners and represented his country in 67 tests and 10 one-day internationals. At the time of his retirement, he was India's leading wicket-taker in tests with 266. But he was so much more than that as well. Uh, Sunil, what are your memories of watching him play and how has the country been remembering him? Well, my abiding memory of uh, watching uh, Mr. Bedi play, as we used to call him Bish uh, in our own way, but Bish and G, was in 1969. And uh, Jim, you'll enjoy this. This was Australia in, in Delhi uh, under the captaincy of uh, Bill Laurie. And uh, that was the game in which, uh, which India won. Uh, and I remember being there at the court to see that famous win in 69. And the whole thing about Bishan Bailey, he took nine wickets in that game for 100-odd runs, was that he stood once at forward short leg when India were really putting the pressure on. And <laughs> Bishan Bailey at forward short leg. I will never forget that picture. And, of course, it came on television, but it was in black and white. But when you went down to the ground, I mean, it was, a, it was sensational because... Beating Australia was one of the biggest achievements that we could possibly ever have as the Indian team. And he was the architect. Nine wickets in that game, five in the second, when Australia was spun out for 107. And then, of course, I mean, he and the other three uh, spinners, Prasanna and uh, Chandrasekhar Venkatragun, really the start of the spin era for India. You know, the spin, not twins, but the spin quartet. And uh, they were instrumental in India winning their first series in the Windies in 71, and in England in 71, that famous test match at the Oval. You know, those are the, the memories, and you can see the way that he used to, you know, he used to float in and the ball used to float out. I mean, that is really <laughs> Bishan Singh Bedi. Oh, well, I was lucky enough to uh, broadcast his cricket in the 70s uh, during the Packer era when the establishment held firm and India came here with their much vaunted spinners. And... Uh, I can still remember him bowling Kim Hughes at the SCG uh, with a slightly quicker one and just went absolutely through him before he could move his bat. Uh, it was a wonderful display of bowling in that game. And I also remember meeting him at a party. He liked the party, didn't he? And I also remember <laughs> having chats with him uh, subsequently in you know, the uh, intervening years when Australia played in India, he was always around. And as Sunil said, he was a man who had an opinion um, and, and voiced it quite strongly. And he was quite entertaining in that regard. But he, now correct me, Sunil, it was, we used to say, oh, he's one of those Terminators. No, 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 it was a Patka. He used to wear a Patka. <laughs> patka, yeah. exactly, you got it right. Yeah. And the whole thing was, which colour Patka is he going to wear after <laughs> the interval? So he used to go in in the morning and then at lunchtime, he used to change it, and he's coming out with a bright pink one. Is he going to come out with a yellow one? And then after the tea, yeah. it will also it used to be a new one, a new colour. You're absolutely right, Jim. It was a patka. Let's turn to the India team of today then, because their performances at the 50-over World Cup are nothing short of, well, astonishing at the moment. Five wins from five so far, the only team to remain unbeaten at the moment. Uh, Virat Kohli is absolutely on fire. 354 runs for him so far. I mean, Sonil, just how impressed have you been with India? Well, I must tell you, I really have been impressed. I, I had uh, my doubts before the... Uh, the World Cup again. I, I voiced them on the program as well. But I think the turning point for India was against Australia in that game when they bowled Australia out for 199. And then they were two for three, and the top three batters were out for zero. I think to turn that around without you know going down, I think that gave them the impetus, that gave them the confidence. And after that, now suddenly it looks like a well-rounded team. The way they took on the, the, the Pakistan total, it was a small total, but they never got bogged down. 
And I think the middle order has stood up. That was one of the biggest problems in the 2019 World Cup. The middle order didn't. And the most important thing, and this is an interesting stat, 10 wickets against Australia, 10 against Pakistan, 10 against New Zealand. They're both three teams out, eight against Afghanistan, eight against Bangladesh. So if you look at all the teams, I don't think that any team in the World Cup has picked up whatever, 30 and 8, 38 and 46 wickets out of five games. No, no one. That is the most impressive stat for me about India. Just on Kohli, and we will just focus on him a little bit more because, you know, he, he is just churning out the runs. And do you think this tournament is really cementing him as an Indian hero if he wasn't already? But I mean, goodness, you can only imagine how that would go off the charts if India do go on to win it. Yes, well, he's way off the charts at the moment on social media. And uh, some are saying, you know, he's he's probably one of the reasons why a cricket's going to turn up um, over 100 years later as a, a sport at the Olympic Games. And it's sort of coldly fired at the moment because of his mag- magnificent uh, cricket skill and his persona as, as a sportsman uh, beyond uh, the Indian diaspora. So, yes, it's fascinating to watch all this. I mean, as an Aust- Australian who enjoys seeing great, great players, and they're not all from our own backyard, uh, they're certainly from India more and more, and Kohli's uh, just stunning, absolutely stunning. But... Um, when we get to the semi-finals, we'll probably touch on this conversation. It's another game, mm. and it only <laughs> yeah. takes only takes yeah. one ball in one game. All of a sudden, uh, you're mortal. Um, and although he's immortal, pretty much at the moment, and has been for most of his career, India will not have done the job until they actually get through and play and win the final. And that's to me still not as strong as they look a certainty. Funny, actually, talking about Kohli kind of loops almost back to Bishan Singh Bade in what you're saying, Sunil, about the way he would fight for players' rights was a big thing for him, wasn't it? And, you know, play, player pay and conditions, etc., a far cry from the way, you know, the superstars of today are both paid and, and fetid, the likes of Virat Kohli. But, I mean, as a team, though, I mean, this Indian side must really be starting to believe that they can go all the way, Sunil, and win this thing, do you think? Oh, yeah, I, I, I think it's there. I think um, they're damping it down. I think Dravid has a role to play in this, you know, to keep emotions under check and not to feel suddenly that they've conquered the world. It's five out of five. There's still four games to go. And I'm sure somewhere in the year, he'll be saying, remember 2019 New Zealand? Remember 2019 New Zealand, the, the semi-final, exactly as Jim said, right? That is the knockout game. That's really when you're going to stand up and fire. And I think that is the important thing. I think the the way that they should approach it is, in fact, right now they're on a week's break or have just taken a week's break and they've been enjoying themselves. You know, you can see that the camaraderie is there. They're, they're all together. And that always happens. You know, success breeds success and success has many fathers and, you know, failures and often. But uh, I think David will keep them under check. Uh, I think Kohli will understand now more than ever before, I think his role within this setup to take India all the way. You know, if he can keep that in under check, and I think he will now, um, I think India have a very, very good chance of going all the way. Well, before their thrashing by Australia, the Netherlands had enjoyed a stunning win over South Africa. But I think it's fair to say that the team that's taken everybody by surprise and is really uh, outperforming previous World Cups for themselves are Afghanistan. After beating England earlier on in the tournament, they've just gone on to beat Pakistan for the first time in one day cricket by pulling off their highest successful chase of all time in the format as well. It was only their third ever win in a 50 over World Cup. Remember, this is just their third time of appearing in this event before this tournament they just had one win over Scotland in 2015. Well to sum up the emotions and to talk us through the journey so far we can welcome former Afghanistan player and current assistant coach Rais Ahmadzai. Rais welcome to Stumped thank you so much for joining us. What was that match like against Pakistan for you watching and what has that meant for the team in particular? Hello, everyone. Uh, uh, and, and you know that uh, that you mentioned that we played, uh, uh, I think, six or seven matches before uh, with Pakistan, especially ODI matches. And in the last few matches, we were very come very close, and the matches was went uh, till to the last over. Uh, if I if I can mention in the last Asia Cup, 50 overs Asia Cup in Abu Dhabi, uh, Pakistan beat in the last over, and 2019 World Cup match was in Edgbaston. Was went very close, and uh, one match, uh, T20 match, uh, 
against Pakistan. Uh, but uh, um, once we beat them in the last uh, T20 series in Sharjah, uh, you know, and we was, uh, honestly, we was expect that. In Chennai ground, we will beat Pakistan and we work very hard for them and how to control the emotion or how to work the, on, on a very, uh, you know, we have skills, but, but sometimes we're missing the part of very, uh, basic things, and uh, we work a lot on that, and we will we were very prepared for that match, and luckily uh, we won that match. And in terms of the rivalry, I mean Pakistan, a neighbouring country, but also a lot of the players going back through Afghanistan history learnt their cricket in refugee camps in Pakistan. Is that added to the overall rivalry? Uh, I'm one of part of that uh, refugee players that mm. we uh, uh, learn cricket in the refugees camps, so not in uh, big cities. We will play all the refugees of one uh, players playing uh, a tennis ball cricket there. Uh, once we come back, we start professional cricket in Afghanistan with the proper uh, cricket ball um, with, with 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 zero kind of facilities. And I think. Uh, uh, it was a very uh, good journey. Start like uh, I would, and sometimes I'm say it was from zero to hero. Um, <laughs> there was not, there was nothing with us, and now we are, we are, we are, we are the team that every everyone uh, can talk about Afghanistan team. So it's just because of talent, because of passion, and uh, you know we have very strong support now. Uh, from the whole nation. Yeah, the the famous book and film I remember, Out of the Ashes, charting your journey from that through to the T20 World Cup in 2010, where Afghanistan made its first appearance, and you featured in that as well. Um, now in 2023, I mean, is it has the batting made a, a big difference? I mean, of course, there's also Ahmed Noor, for example, took three wickets on his debut. He seems a very special player. Where has the the, the biggest difference come? Um, you know, like as I say, uh, we are very lucky that we have a natural talent. Uh, still, we are still uh, very far behind from the uh, uh, from cricket facilities like uh, the other countries have, like uh, Bangladesh or Sri Lanka. Not compare with Australia or England or South Africa or uh, New Zealand, but still very far behind from uh, Sri Lanka, Bangladesh or uh, Pakistan. But one thing we have, we are, we are, we are, uh, we want to play cricket and we. Uh, our players have a natural talent. Uh, you mentioned Noor Ahmad that he played with me in 2002 uh, uh, 20 World Under 19 World Cup. When I saw first time him, I believe him that one day uh, he will be a superstar. And uh, he played before that match. He played uh, lots of franchise uh, cricket and batting wise. Uh, you know, skills wise, we are, we are uh, like uh, some good players. Ibrahim Zadran came from the under 19. He play. He start cricket in Afghanistan. Gurbaz start cricket in Afghanistan. So that means our, our our system is going very well, and and the time will become, and I'm sure we will become some great batsmen in future. Uh, Rais, this is uh, Sunil Gupta for Akashwani in in Delhi. Now, Afghanistan players have, have made India their home base, really, that Noida, just outside uh, Delhi, and. Uh, how big a factor has that been playing in India for such a long time? The support from India and especially the BCCI has made for the players to feel settled playing in India during this tournament. You know, like uh, for lots of people, uh, they, they, they will be thank that, uh, especially when we beat England, uh, I heard some uh, people were saying that uh, upset. And I told them, like, I speak with Ian Bishop and I say, no, you, we are not here to to uh, to upset. We are, we, are, we are the team that we can beat any team. Uh, uh, for a few reasons, uh, you know, we have one of the best spinners that take, we have the same condition and we played lots of matches here. Our players uh, playing here, the IPL matches. So, so these Indian condition is very ideal and very suitable for us. So that's why we are not here to upset the team. We are the team that we can, if we did uh, well, we can beat any team. And we are the team that like uh, not easy side in this tournament. So these pitches, these condition and uh, 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 practice on uh, in India. It's help a lot. And you have Ajay Jadeja as your mentor. Um, and he was an India captain at one point of time. Um, how big a help has he been? A happy guy in the pavilion. You know, he's all the time motivate the players. And, and uh, you know, uh, sometimes, you know, we are, we, are, we are naturally emotional people and we are very excited. But, but he's a guy that he all the time motivate the players and how to control and how to, how to go move forward uh, just posit on a positive way. In his mentality, there's no negative things. 
Mm. And Rise, what has Jonathan Trott brought to the camp since he came in as coach in July last year? A guy, a guy that he had the same mentality like we have, one that all the time want to win. Uh, he, in his mind and his mentality, there is no, no, no space for lose the matches. So he's, he's very excited, very sometimes like you know, uh, to become angry in a positive way, uh, become angry because he want. He's telling to the players that look, guys, you guys have a talent, but use your skills and use your mind. So that's that's that that's his mentality, and he's a guy that he, he want to want to do something uh, for 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 the team. And your progression, sort of going forward, when you look at series, you've got to come post this World Cup. Even you host Ireland, and then you go to India. I just wonder when Australia cancelled a test and then an ODI series against Afghanistan earlier this year, which they cited due to the, the Taliban stance on women's sport. Did you ever worry that other countries might cancel series as well? I think it will be not, it will be very unfair. Uh, uh, you know, the people just involve uh, uh, sports and pol- pol- politics. Like, you know, sports, sports, uh, sportsmen people or sports uh, guys cannot... Uh, challenge the government uh, we, are, we, we are the people that we represent the people and you know like last week did the whole country come out to the on the road they celebrate they enjoy they they they, they you know we we need that celebration and i'm uh, you know it was very very unfair that australia canceled the matches and before that before that 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 that, that, that the government happened they canceled the test match also so we want cricket and we are here to represent the country and we want to give something to our youth, uh, you know, from last four years, we 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 had lots of problems. Uh, you know, I was I I born in the war, and uh, still I become like four four, four years uh, spend my life in the war. So we want peace, we want sports, we want to do uh, something the people should celebrate. I guess on on the back of that, did you ever worry that ICC funding could be reduced or full member test status be taken away because of the the policies of the ruling government? Because, of course, it means that Afghanistan isn't fulfilling the requirement that all other test playing nations have to, which is to support a women's set up. So did you ever worry that the ICC might reduce funding or that test status be removed? I think, like, as I mentioned, this this will be not fair. You know, uh, we, we we are the people that we want that if oh, the whole, uh, uh, everyone should be equal, treat equal in the country, like women or Wives or girls or women or uh, everyone to be equal. But sometimes, if you if you have not something in your control, you cannot challenge the government. But as a human being, we we try to give respect to everyone. Rice, it's been a pleasure speaking to you on Stump today. Congratulations for the two wins in the tournament so far. And um, well, there could be some more around the corner as well. Uh, good luck for the rest of this event. Thanks for being on Stump. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you. That's all we've got time for here on Stumped, though. My thanks to Sunil Gupta and to Jim Maxwell. And to all of you for listening, we'll see you again next time next week. Bye for now.